Kentucky. This is WYNT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Connor James. Tonight we're remembering the four lives a fire in Bell County claimed this morning. These are three of the four bright faces that lit up that home on Hearst Hollow Road. 12-year-old Sierra, 9-year-old Cynthia, and 8-year-old Sean Posey. Police right now are unsure what caused the fire, but do not believe it's anything suspicious. You can see what is left of that home in this video captured this afternoon. Many in Bell County are working through immense loss right now, and for the mother and daughter looking at the house, they say she is still numb. Numb, like in shock. I was praying and kept praying that they had got out, but unfortunately they did not. My three kids and my mother all died in the fire. All four of the victims were sent to Frankfurt for an autopsy. But back here in the mountains, throughout the loss, many are feeling you can begin to see hope in places where the heartbreak is the greatest. A second home to the three Posey children was Bell Central School. That's where the story of healing begins tonight. As the cold January wind blows, there is still a loss that holds fast through the air in Bell County. But here in the halls of Bell Central, sorrow has not become solitude. It's been a rough day, but it's been a day of togetherness. Where the pain of death is present, the smell of flowers in the dead of winter serves as a reminder of life. 12-year-old Sierra, a quiet but kind soul. 11-year-old Cynthia, for lack of better words, a spitfire for sure, but with a smile that brightened the darkest days. And little Sean, the loving younger brother who really liked to think he played big brother for the other two. All three of them, they were precious kids and they took care of each other. Principal Jennifer Blankenship finds peace in those memories. They're so much better off, and if they could come back, they would choose not to come back because life is so much better where they're at than where we're at. Amid the loss, students have already begun to organize ways to remember the three. But I am more proud when my students show their love and compassion and kindness toward others because that is what's important in life. Every day, Jennifer goes over the morning announcements and tells the kids she loves them, she believes in them, and that she has their backs. Tuesday, that message was returned. They have told us today that they love us, they believe in us, and they've got our backs too. Healing takes a lot of different forms. And it is very important to make sure that when kids leave your classroom or when they leave your building, they know you love them. It is very important. And that's all. But healing finds its way into the cracks left behind by heartbreak, and that's where the love of a community grows the strongest. Now, tomorrow morning, students at the school plan on gathering together and singing Amazing Grace as one in memory of the three. Counselors are available to students for however long it may take. Now to more heartbreak, this time over in Floyd County. That's where one man died this morning after he crashed into a sheriff's deputy. Police say Donald R. Tackett Jr. of Pikeville was driving northbound on Bay Bays Branch Road in Floyd County when his car ended up in the southbound lane headed into oncoming traffic. Tackett's car crashed into another car driven by Floyd County Sheriff's Deputy Kevin Johnson. Tackett died on the scene. Johnson received minor injuries. I think weather definitely played a part in this collision. Uh, um, really poor road conditions, a, a solid sheet of ice there. Now, officers say drivers should give themselves more time on the road to commute on snowy mornings. And those temperatures starting to drop outside and definitely here in the studio. Connor and I are, yes, freezing right now. But those temperatures outside into about the low to mid-30s, 37 in Jackson, 32 here in Hazard. Still in the upper 30s down into the Cumberland Valley. So if you are having or seeing some slick spots on the roads, maybe from the snow earlier this morning, could be a little bit slick as you head into that morning commute. Most of us will drop into about the lower 30s with those clear skies, which, yes, means a little bit of frost. So give yourself a few extra minutes 
minutes on that Wednesday morning to scrape off those cars with those calm, clear skies and those calm winds and those cooler temperatures will allow for frost to form on those cars as we head into the overnight hours. But the good news is sunshine continues throughout the day on Wednesday. Temperatures are going to get very warm over the next couple of days, but that soggy weather returns by the time we get into your Friday and Saturday. I'll have all those details coming up in just a little bit. All right, thank you, Paige. Well, in 2019 alone, three A and B quick stop locations in Knox County were robbed. One resulted in a fatality. The most recent robbery on December 21st led to the arrest of a father-son duo. But after further investigation, police believe that person was that robbery, excuse me, was an inside job by an employee. New at 11, WYMT's Lacey Roberts spoke with one employee and her partner who were arrested and has more. I'm absolutely terrified. I, I don't know what to do at this point. Nobody wants to listen to me because they don't care. Courtney Simpson says she has no idea why she and her partner were in jail. The AMB quick stop where Simpson used to work was robbed at gunpoint in late December. A father and son, Russell and Alex Toothman, were arrested, but police say there were more people involved. He's talked to a lot of people and a lot of a lot of the interviews and stuff and statements people's got led him to the led him to the inside. Inside, meaning Simpson and her partner Jennifer Gray. And they said that the boys made statements, that that family made statements that me and Courtney supposedly planned it. I would never in my life do something like this. The girls say the gas station hosts underground gambling. And police say the girls worked with the robbers to take that dirty money. But they keep them open all night. So, you know, everybody's coming in and out. Everybody's coming in and playing the machines. They know people's giving money out in there all night long. Deputies say they have evidence that Simpson gave the robbers specific instructions, something she denies. I wouldn't know how much money is there. The only person that would know how much money was there at the time of the robbery would have been the person working at the time. The two girls face charges of complicity to first degree robbery. In Knox County, Lacey Roberts, WYMT Mountain News. Now we attempted to reach out to A and B Quick Stop multiple times to ask about the robbery and the accusations of that illegal gambling. However, they repeatedly hung up on us. Both Jennifer Gray and Courtney Simpson will appear in court on Thursday. Well, deputies in Laurel County say two men were arrested after a miles-long police chase. It all started when the two were spotted driving recklessly on Kentucky Highway 192. The two led police on a lengthy chase. At one point, deputies say the two forced a minivan off the road and into a tree before they bailed out on foot. 21-year-old Cody Pruitt and 18-year-old Jesse Cobb were arrested and charged with fleeing and evading, reckless driving, and wanton endangerment. Well, more than 60 employees of Panther Creek Mining in Kanawha County are losing their job. The county's commission recently received war notices, and officials said the notices affect 65 employees. Commission President Kent Carper said the layoffs will impact more than 100 family members in Kanawha County. The layoffs are set to take place in March. Well, the Lexington Herald Leader reports a local coal company can't pay its miners because it didn't post the required bond. That could mean Quest Energy and the American Resources Corporation may be breaking state law. Miners with Perry County Coal told us they were laid off last week without notice, and now they're missing their paycheck. If this sounds familiar, it's because it's almost the exact same situation black jewel miners faced back in the summer. During the Black Jewel saga, then Attorney General Andy Bashir blamed the Kentucky Labor Cabinet for not ensuring the bonds were posted. Now that Bashir is governor, some are wondering how fast the new administration is moving to enforce the decades-old law. Well, Hazard Community and Technical College President Dr. Jennifer Linden sat down with Steve Hensley to talk about a variety of topics today, including the college's efforts to help laid off coal miners find new jobs. One of the most popular programs for coal miners is the Electrical Lineman Program, a program Dr. Linden says several black jewel miners themselves just graduated from. The good thing about the lineman um, is that you will make a salary that's comparable to what you made uh, in the mines, so that's attractive uh, to many people. Uh, we have another lineman class starting in March uh, we have CDL, and that's something else that's just been so popular. 
You can watch the full interview with Dr. Linden Monday night at 7 o'clock on Issues and Answers. Well, one seven-year-old boy from Johnson County is giving up his birthday money for a good cause. Xavier Young has always had a heart for animals, but learning how the brush fires in Australia are affecting the wildlife there, he knew he needed to take action. I started donating money so I could help the animals in Australia. Xavier's mom started a GoFundMe. All the money raised, including his birthday money, will go to the World Wildlife Fund. A pharmacist in Pikeville is giving away free flu vaccinations. This comes after the Center for Disease Control and Prevention recently ranked Kentucky as one of the top states for reported flu cases. Joel Thornsbury says one of the reasons many eastern Kentuckians do not get the shot is actually due to the cost. You know, we want to get those people that, that might not have the ability to get so that we can prevent them from getting sick down the road. The pharmacist says it is easy to get the flu, but it is also easy to prevent it. After getting the vaccination, you should wash your hands more often and be mindful when you touch your eyes, nose and mouth. Of course, it is always advised to stay away from people who may already be sick. Well, there's some good news for people who want to obtain their GED. The state is waiving test fees. Those fees amounted to about $120. State officials say this will help the more than 300,000 Kentuckians who do not have a GED or high school diploma. They say this removes a barrier for people with goals of a better education and better jobs. We are going to help so many adults. I believe that the, the first amount of funding that we're putting aside could help 5,000 Kentuckians this coming year uh, secure that GED. But let me tell you, if the volume and demand is more, we'll find the money. The Education and Workforce Development Cabinet allotted more than $600,000 in state funding to waive the test fees. People who don't pass the test the first time will have to pay the fee to take the test again. Well, coming up at 11... Iran retaliates following the U.S. strike targeting an Iranian general. We'll take you to Washington with what we know about the attack and reaction from Capitol Hill. But first, dozens of cars pile up on the interstate due to heavy snow and ice. And we have a few mild days before soggy weather returns back to the mountains. I'll have those details coming up.